thing. Diagram space travel message. This is following the space travel ship message video. This is my information that I lost originally from the start from December 11th at 1:57 a.m. is when I started that. This is about the 5.878327986 e message from the Mayas of Central and South um, based on a meditation dream that came to me. Um, this is my information that I got for research and I've been talking about it in the last 20 or so videos. Okay, so it was given on December the 10th, 2011 from 3.15 p.m. till about 3.45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Saturday during a meditation with clear quartz crystals, the oxygen machine, and Reiki healing CD playing in the background. This is how I got this message. It spins at the same rate as Earth and travels faster. That's what this outer core does. This part here is stable. Go in there. And then we've got the con it's the control room and Earth speed creates gravity. Mix. So I looked up lithium and magnesium to see if it could be part of a spaceship because that's what they said it was. And I just got mixed lithium, magnesium, aryl oxide derived from crystal, crystal structures and solutions and NMR studies of an unexpected magnesium rich oxo product with a trignolic bipritical L MIG4 cage and expected lithium rich product with a more familiar blah 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 blah. I have no idea what this stuff is. Okay. So basically I'm sharing it with you. You guys can figure out what it means. Kenneth W. Henderson, Robert E. Mulvey, Frederick B. M. Reinhard. William Clegg Lynn Horsberg in lieu of an abstract. Okay, um, over here we've got some sort of diagram that comes with this. And it's the properties of aluminum demand that the maximum temperature of the orbiter structure be kept below 350 degrees Fahrenheit, 175 degrees Celsius in operations. Ugh. They want it to be 175 degrees Celsius inside of it? That'd be horrible, eh? kind of hot. But air, aerial thermal heating during liftoff and reentry, in other words, heating caused by friction with the air, will create surface temperatures high above this level and in many places will push the temperatures well above the melting point of aluminum. 1220 degrees Fahrenheit or 660 degrees Celsius. Clear and effective insulator was needed. This is where they talk about how they developed um, spaceships and stuff. Okay, the mineral crystal bite is a high temperature pulling, pulling morph of silica meaning that it has the same chemical formula, SiO2. Now, remember SiO2 comes up in that other set of solar cell information that came from before? Um, solar cell. Where are you? Where was the solar cells? They were in here, weren't they? No. Not that one. Not that one. Not the mathematics. Computate. Nope. The carrier. Remember the carrier? Notes from the video called... Look at this. See? My title's gone. <laughs> I swear this computer's haunted. So a carrier light absorbing carbon black. And remember the dye sensitive solar cells? The sexual combination of materials. And SO2 came up on it. See, there's the diagram for that. And I could have swore TiO2 solar cells right there. See? TiO2, well, pretty close to the other one, right? So, let's combine these two things together and see what they mean. Okay, that's SiO2 and TiO2. Okay, so maybe stick the two together and see what you get. But it's distinct crystal to structure. Both quartz and crystal white are polymorphs with all the members of the quartz group, which also include cosite, trimite, and stovite. Crystal white occurs as white, okada, Acidic volcano rocks and then converted deposits in the monetary formation. I'm going to skip over these words. I don't know how to say them. The U.S. state of California. Crystal body is stable only above 1470 degrees. It can crystallize and persist mestably at lower temperatures. The persistence of crystal body outside of the thermal dynamic stability range occurs because the transition from it to quartz is reconstructive, requiring the breaking up and reforming of silica form framework. These frameworks are composed of SiO to hydrogen, in which eruption atom is shared with a neighboring titan so that the chemical... Um, okay. okay, there's a lot of stuff here, okay? 
So it talks about the degeneration of cubic crystallograph axes, refrain of forward rotational axis in the tetragonal form. So remember, we want something to rotate. So I don't know if that'll help or not. Okay. It's called crystal bite. You can look it up. Mineral crystal bite. Okay, obsidian comes up as well. It was valued in Stone Age cultures because, like flint, it could be fractured to produce sharp blades or arrowheads. So I'm thinking the little spikes on our spaceship. See the little spikes on the spaceship are made of that. Okay, uh, like all glass and some other types of naturally occurring rocks, obsidian breaks with a characteristic conchoidal fracture. It was also polished to create early mirrors. Modern archaeologists have developed a relative dating system, obsidian hydrating dating, to the age of the artifacts. Although the Maya were once thought to have been peaceful, current theories emphasize the role of interpolity -pol warfare as a factor in the development and perpetuation of Maya society. The goals and motives of warfare in Maya culture are not thoroughly understood, but there are several kinds of archaeological clues. These include fortified defenses around structures, complex artistic and ethnographical depictions of war and weapons such as obsidian blades and projectile points. So Don Crabtree produced obsidian blades for surgery and other purposes and has written articles on the subject. They actually use these blades, I guess, in surgery. This is what it looks like, obsidian, whatever, from Lake County, Oregon. And it's volcanic glass, chemical formulas, black, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is interesting. Now, what I did was a Google Documents for round UFO spikes to see if anything close in description comes up. Yes, December 11th, 2002, 27 a.m. Guess what? We find Robert Taylor, a well-respected forester employed by the Livingstone Development Corporation, had an intriguing on top with a UFO that landed a small clearing in the forest near Livingstone, West Lothian in Scotland. And it's known as the Deschmont Woods Encounter. And he basically talks about a round thing. Um, now he gives the dimensions of it. 20 feet, 6 meters across, and 12 feet high, 3.65 meters. The object appeared to be made of a dark gray metallic material. Hello. Dark gray or black, right? Okay. And oh, where are you? No, oh, I lost. Okay. At times, the use seemed to be transparent as of trying to disguise itself. A narrow edge of some kind ran around the outside of the object, and some dark patches, which looked like portholes, could be seen on the body of the object. When Bob Taylor began to approach, it dropped from its bottom half two spears with protruding metal spikes, which looked like old naval mines. These two small objects, of which was approximately three feet wide, were made of the same dark metallic material as the large object. Approaching Taylor, the small spear left, left tracks on the ground while rolling towards him. So it rolls towards him. Then we have Austin, Texas. This guy takes a picture of what he sees, right? On November 13, 2010, 6.30 p.m., he was driving home on Highway 95. He noticed a plane with red, white, red, and blue lights approaching. It hovered over him. Um, let's see what he did. A white orb appeared right under the object and began to travel to the SE. Southeast. I continued to look for 20 cents until it was gone. It uh, was a hovering object. Spin, move up and down, side to side. It was a shape that appeared like a star with many points and faceted like a diamond. Okay? There's another one from Portage. I was standing in the backyard July 31st, 2009. Saw a light looks too big for a star. It's a small circle of light in the center and spikes of light all around it. Montana spikes of light. Billings, last night, 11.30 p.m., my husband and I, October 25, 2011, they noticed a big bright star, uh, spikes of light. It looks like a jellyfish, but that's what it looks like to them. That's the picture they took. Why does it have airplanes overhead? Are they following it? I don't even know if these pictures are true, okay, so don't get mad at me. This is the stuff I found on the internet, so... 1971, early afternoon, huge round ball with spikes, again. Um, these are all accounts of people seeing something with tentacles. So then I started Googling UFO with tentacles and I found more information. Bernardsville, August 12, 2011. I should have made a separate video for this, eh? 
Oh wow. The sightings, I'll just put sightings on there as well. See, another one. Round thing with spikes. Another round thing with spikes. She saw it. She draw it. Shapeshifter, vertical cigar, to horizontal to spear. This is um, October 7, 2007. You know, it's always in October, right? Brilliant lip pencil or cigar with cookie shade, moved to his arms, and uh, Nortonville, Kansas. They don't want to talk about who they are. Tuesday, January 6, 2009, 1316. Engineers from Ecto City were working to establish how a 20 meteor blade mysteriously fell off a turbine in Con Consahome, wind farm. And they think it was a ship because they saw something over top of it. It was brown in the shape of a cigar, but it had some strange gray curved tubular tentacle structure coming out around the front of the object. So there's the evidence that my little drawing here exists. Spooky, eh?